the role. I'd like to thank, uh, first of all, uh, the organization for giving me a chance to talk about uh, certification or energy attribute uh, tracking systems. Um, a quick note about my company to start with. Um, so uh, Initio is a sustainable uh, Initio is a consultancy company uh, that is focused on sustainable energy and transport. We've been running a uh, competence center on hydrogen and fuel cells for more than 15 years right now. And we've been working for um, uh, actors along the value chain, uh, including uh, a lot for uh, governments. Uh, and we help them to understand the technology, the regulatory uh, framework, and as well how they can make uh, profitable business cases and, uh, and business models. Me, myself, I'm responsible for our European, Middle Eastern and Asian uh, activities. Um, I find it very important to understand where the regulation is going because it's the regulation which will determine the business case for these uh, new technologies. Um, you can see some of the studies I participated on and. Um, I've got a keen interest in everything that's linked to certification, which you can see from a couple of the initiatives what, what I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm involved into. So quickly, uh, why the hell do we do uh, certification? Um, I always compare it against the data sheets uh, of, a, of a car. It's important that we uh, provide information to a customer. Um, but it's also important to uh, to report to a certain policy objectives like quota, feeding tariffs, and so forth and so onwards. So it's very important that we harmonize at the European worldwide level uh, what are the data that we're looking at, uh, what are the uh, measurement units uh, comparing 40 to 100 kilometer against 30 miles to the gallon. That's not really easy. Um, and it's important that we have uh, international standards for this. We can also see that, at least in case of the car industry, the customers getting more and more sophisticated, especially after the Volkswagen scandal. Many customers are asking right now, how is this consumption being measured? What are the drive cycles? Uh, who is testing these uh, drive cycles? Who is uh, controlling the uh, laboratories doing that and so forth and so on with them. This is exactly the same thing what I've been developing together with uh, with Certify. So we've been developing an, a factual data sheet of, uh, of hydrogen and, and, and fuel cell technology. And I think it's very important to note that it's uh, about objective characteristics of a hydrogen production. What is the production technology? Where it's been produced? Has it received financial support? What uh, are the greenhouse gas allocated to that and so forth and so on where factual and objective data. Next to that, we've been developing two labels. And I like to say that uh, labels are um, uh, more about subjective appreciation. It's almost talking about good and bad. Uh, and I think it's important that everybody can uh, define their own labels. When I get back to the car industry, some people might find the number of seats uh, important. Some people might find the consumption important. Some others might find this CO2 uh, exhaust important. Uh, everybody can have their uh, own choice uh, in, in that regard. So I would clearly like to mention that uh, a data sheet and a label are two distinct topics. What are these data sheets used for? It's actually to propagate environmental attributes along the industrial chain, as you can see here from the point of production until the end use. Now, many people ask me uh, how they should certify their uh, renewable uh, molecules. Um, usually, my first question back is, uh, what, what's your customer? And you really need to understand uh, the customer um, because you need to understand what's his business model. Um, I'll give two examples in case you want to make a renewable uh, ammonia for urea production into uh, Europe your business model will be on the CO2 price. Uh, and therefore it will be uh, very important that you have a look at the greenhouse gas uh, emissions at each step of the supply chain. And you need to understand how um, there, there could be an, um, an, a, a cross border um, carbon tax uh, and, and likely your, your business model is to avoid such a uh, carbon tax uh, going, uh, going forward. We can also use that uh, ammonia to produce uh, green fertilizers. Um, 
yeah, for another regulatory regime will be uh, applicable. Uh, but your business model depends on the willingness to pay of the end customer. And so typically, uh, the willingness to pay of an end customer of uh, people willing to buy uh, bio food based on uh, on green or low carbon uh, fertilizers, typically that willingness to pay is, uh, is lower. Um, but also uh, the way you have to set up your plant uh, and to produce renewable ammonia comes at, an, uh, at a lower cost. So it's pretty important to have a general overview uh, who your customer is, what the regulatory regime he's working into, what does that mean on the eligibility criteria of your uh, plan setup? What is the certification system that you have to follow? And potentially what it needs to do by your government to make sure that there is a mutual recognition of that uh, certification. So specifically, Certify is actually working on, uh, on these two uh, aspects. Uh, so we're working a lot on guarantees of origin as well as uh, any uh, molecule that can be used into the uh, transport uh, sector. This is a, a big focus of uh, the Certify program. So to, to, to try to uh, round, round up, uh, so this is uh, my high level roadmap for uh, development of GG export of uh, renewable and low carbon molecules. I think it's important that uh, you first have a look at uh, what are the market segments you would like to, uh, to serve. Um, and that uh, you communicate that to your government so that there can be an, uh, a governmental collaboration to set up a framework of the recognition of these certification screens. Next to that, uh, industry can already start developing its projects, but it's very important that you follow up uh, the EU policy framework because it's really on, uh, on the move. And, uh, our RED2 is not implemented yet, uh, our renewable energy directive, or it's already being revised. So make sure that you have flexible uh, engineering uh, strategies and to uh, allow yourself to, um, to set up your projects in, in such a way that it will be compliant with the EU policy framework. Otherwise, uh, you won't find a high willingness to pay by your uh, end customer. And only thereafter, I think you can uh, focus on uh, the certification, which will uh, follow naturally. It's simply important to see whether your uh, government has a uh, already worked together with the EU for mutual recognition of this uh, certification. And that's in a nutshell what I uh, had to say. I, uh, I'd like to thank you for your uh, attention and then uh, I'm happy to, uh, to take any uh, questions later on. Yes.